Welcome, everybody. I think as I look around the room, I, I know just about everybody. A few new faces, maybe. Um, you think we can go around the room? Uh, we don't typically do. We have kind of a limited time, um, to, and usually people kind of take the full hour going through this. But uh, All right, we can we do, some, we do some social stuff no, afterwards. No yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to give an overview on is, is enterprise architecture, and when we talk about enterprise architecture, there's some industry standards, but there's um, also the ability to kind of customize how you implement. It. So I would say I'm going to give you an overview of the discipline and then a little bit of information or some information about how we've implement, implemented it so far at uh, EU. So the agenda will be just EA overview to start, then we'll get into how it's been applied to date at BU, and then I'll wrap up. And then there are questions. So the traditional um, IP solutions approach was really very siloed. The squiggly lines are represent um, <laughs> attempts at integration across the silos, be it applications or data or different technical platforms. This is kind of how we've evolved over the years um, w without uh, the structure of a, of, a, of a methodology to help kind of look at things more holistically. Uh, you can take this diagram. We took it and it initially said instead of institutional, it, would, it said corporate. So it's very applicable to the corporate environment or in our uh, in our environment, which is institutional. So this is kind of how the world was perceived before they started to create a structure around the discipline around enterprise architecture. So the attempt with, with uh, applying a, an approach and a methodology to architecture is to take business requirements coming out of business strategy and looking at them and how to fulfill them from a technology standpoint. But we don't just get hung up on the technical aspect of things. We really look at the business process. So that's as equal, equally as important as the technology. You don't want to implement technology for technology's sake. You want to implement it on sound business process. So like when we did the VUWorks implementation or we do some other big implementation, we've got a housing project implementation going on, we're doing fit right now. When we get to each one of those things, a lot of thought goes into the processes behind those. Um, so that that drives that's driving EA is just good business requirements, good strategy. One of the things you want to tie to is you know whether it's a, an institution or a corporation's mission uh, statement and goals. It's a little challenging here, I gotta say, because a lot of the stuff I look at the universities mission statements. It, it's really all around what we expect to our, our, our education. Uh, a lot of things around what we're going to do to the campus and how we're going to extend things and how we're going to enable the faculty and how we're going to recruit faculty and be a world-renowned institution, right? I don't see things in there that I can just latch on to from a business standpoint. It's kind of challenging at times, to be honest with you. Um, but I think as time goes on and education is more costly. I think I'm going to see things in there at some point that I'm going to say, showing the value of an education, right? So you spend, you know, spending all this money and you want to see that the outcome from that is that you're employable and you have a career and you have a future ahead of you, right? So those are things that I think from a business perspective I could latch on to. But we do definitely try to tie everything that we do to the mission of the university and to this guy. So here, you know, along came enterprise architecture. So what is it? Um, it's an effective approach to looking at um, different variables, be it business requirements, again, strategy, mission statements, and kind of bringing it together. Uh, the purpose is to optimize across the enterprise, the often fragmented, which you can tell by the previous one of the previous diagrams with the squiggly lines. Um, legacy of processes and, and automations and requirements and, and all that kind of stuff, the way you kind of structure that so that it isn't a bunch of silos and a bunch of squiggly lines. Uh, 
You do this through adoption of a framework, the framework that we've adopted here, for the most part, to some degree. Because there are other, I'll show later on, the various frameworks. Um, but we, we've tried to pick from uh, TOGA the, um, the pieces that can make sense here, that we can fit with. Oh, yeah, I've got a slide that will come up in a minute that explains what, how, where the, what the five letters stand for. So it's a, it's a methodology, and I'll show you the other ones in a minute. So just here's what enterprise architecture is, why we've implemented it. Kind of, I'm going to knock down some of those squiggly lines to look at things more holistically. We do that through a framework, and the methodology that we're using, the one, one of them is TOGA. So here's what TOGIF is. It's the open group architecture framework. Um, it's essentially the de facto standard out there. Uh, it's supported by about 300 members. Um, I'm on one of the, uh, you know, I think, uh, number of severe and a few of us other, we've gone to a subscription that we see a lot of the, 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 the dialogue that goes back and forth about the members contributing, updating the, the version of TOGA and adding new things and, and new capabilities to it. Uh, it's founded on best practices. The other frameworks that are out there, Zachman, the Federal Enterprise Architecture, and then Dartman. So I would say that the ones that we've implemented the most here are TOGA and Dartman. The Gartner's framework, to me, we're going to see later on, I'm going to show you job descriptions of different architects, different um, kinds of architects. Those come directly from Gartner. The charter that's been created for EA came from Gartner. Um, I went to a Gartner conference, I think the first year I was here. We, we went to TOGA training, we got the TOGA um, training. It was like, I think it was fire hose. I mean, I, I, want, I went in and I was like, we had a, it was a four day or five day class, I think it was four, right? And I'm like, can you give me the top 10 things that I should take back and implement immediately? And the instructor refused and said, no, I'm, you're drinking from the Bible, you're getting all of it. It's up to you to go back to find a project and pick what you want to implement over time. So we've kind of done that to a degree. And I think it's a, it's a continual improvement process that we've got to continue with to evolve it. Um, one of the things is the charter. I talked to Sierra about this the other day. So I'm going to take the, I need a formal group that is going to look at the charter now. It's been out there for a couple of years. to make some, some changes to it. Um, there's an excellent article, an MSDN article, that compares the different frameworks. It's, it's insanely long. Um, goes into a lot of detail. There is an executive summary portion to it. But it kind of talks to all of the different frameworks and what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, Pete Rouster came upon this through uh, class he was taking in, in, uh, in the master's program last semester, and uh, he pointed me to it. And it's a great, it's a great art. So why do we do EA? So again, everything we do is always founded on business requirements, vision, strategy. Uh, we want to create effective change. I, I call it solving, I like to solve macro problems and not micro, because when you get locked into dealing with little micro one-off problems, I think, you know, sometimes you hit the target and sometimes you don't. I, I, I think it's much more challenging to, to look at little pieces than it is to kind of step above and look and say, okay, this is really where I want to go. And yeah, it's made up of these pieces, but this is what EA is trying to do. It's trying to get you to look at things more holistically. Um, a big piece is looking, understanding what our current environment is and then understanding where we want to go to the next step. can give you a, a ton of examples. I mean, one good one was uh, a Danis Arena wants to implement a new ticket uh, solution, a new, or a new event scheduling solution. So one of the things when we started to talk about it was I know that um, being a staff member or being an alumni, you get discounts that other people don't get. So I'm thinking there's got to be some kind of integration capabilities between us and the solution. 
and what it, and what's there currently? You know, we start with that. The Mayor Gesson was working on a project with this, right? This, you were working on this project, doing some of the analysis. And we have to understand what the data dependencies were that are currently required before we propose a new solution. So that's why it's important to have what the current and then knowing what the future, okay, going forward. Is that still a requirement for us? Do we want to handle it in an automated fashion? Do we want to handle it in, in a manual fashion? Um, we want to always be looking, again, we're not here for technology, just for technology's sake. It's the relationships between the people, the processes, the information, and the technology. Looking at it holistically, knowing that we're not proposing something that it's not going to have proper business process support. And you can, you can all recall back to what the experience was coming from our non-SAP business applications to our SAP-based business applications, right? There was a lot of change there, a lot of, and a lot of it was, a lot of, I think, a lot of the challenges were related to the business process changes in adapting them. From what I saw coming in, because I came new to BU at the time that the BU was being implemented, and I came from numerous other SAP environments, was we came from a more, we went from a, like this, I don't know what to call it, like a hierarchical thing where people would delegate to other people to do their administrative tasks, to now we've got employee self-service and manager self-service and all these things. And I think that culture was hard to adapt. That was a lot of change for people that had been here for a long period of time. And, we're used to doing something a certain way. So I, I think always looking at the business processes is one of the, is one of the first and most important things that we do. Uh, we have a governing and supporting process that we use and try again, try to look at things more holistically uh, to address challenges. So the benefits, we, we want to see increased efficiency, right? We want to reduce um, op operational risk we want to be able to deploy quicker. Again, if I don't have to solve, if I can solve a problem from a macro perspective, maybe that I can pull in a bunch of different little micro things and get them you know, accomplished through a bigger initiative, I want to be able to look at that. Uh, we want to improve access to information. Uh, all these other things just make sense. Service quality, reduce IT costs. Uh, we, we're always required to uh, to, it, to adhere to uh, different compliance and security standards, and leverage. One of the things that we try to do is look at when we get a request. Do we have something that already exists within our portfolio that this this one group isn't using? Can we can we recommend that? And that cuts down on all the other things, costs and things that I think, but also reduces training. So we try to standardize on things. Be it as low level as an operating system or a database platform or even a storage platform or server, whatever, to applications. So we're always looking for standardization. Any questions about these things? Pretty, pretty common sense, right? Um, it's that time of year again. I can't wait for Saturday night. Um, I think we. Mm -hmm. When you try to put structure in around something that was fairly unstructured, you, want to, you don't want to walk in and be perceived as a bully or a cop or a, you know, some, some authority figure. That, you know, it's always better to be working in a team environment. I think we've uh, accomplished that to, to some degree. I'm looking forward to um, expanding upon that going forward and having all of the different groups work together. I think we've seen it in a number of the projects we, with the identity access management project. We, we work across systems engineering, client services, applications, uh, the, the, the works initiative, we see that, all of them. So it's just, EA is a team player. That's, we're all team players, we're all looking to, uh, to make the most efficient decisions. When I look at enterprise architecture, I think that these are, these are the, the four uh, disciplines within it. So we have technology, and the things that I categorize as, as being in that space are security, compliance, firewalls, VPN, you know, so the infrastructure stuff. Information, that's where we, that's data, that's our data, that's our, um, our data warehouses and things of that nature, our data models, we want to have a we want to have uh, a data model that represents 
new higher institution, I was going to say corporate data model, but that's a good idea. The corporate world, but the same concept applies to the, the institution. So we want to see what all the data looks like. So when we go to implement a new student system or we did the housing or something like that, we know we know what the data is that we're, we're targeting, right? And then we start to look at the processes behind that. Solutions, so that's applications, that's interfaces and a lot of the integration that happens. Um, and then the business. And the challenge here is that, um, really, to be, to be frank with you, is the business side. I, I leverage the PMO for when they have a business analyst, and there's been a couple of projects that it's, it's clear. This, we had somebody that came out of the academic administration area that was working with us on a graduate admission system, right? And so that person to me is a solid <coughs> business analyst. They're, they're, they're great. They're, they're giving me all the information I need and the team needs to do an evaluation of solutions for the space. Other spaces is a little more challenging. But we work closely with the clients. We go to the clients and ask them to help us provide um, the business um, architecture. We were just doing that when we were doing this whole workday evaluation where ENSO was working closely with us and a number of other departments in terms of helping to make sure that what we were evaluating and working against would meet you know, all the requirements. Solutions, this is uh, Vlad's space, so he oversees the solution architects. Mm -hmm. and this, we've got this pretty well defined. We have uh, a template that we work with from the, the, the PMO and us have agreed to. And we take this template out and we fill it out. We've got some of the things filled out for security within there as well included. So we've been able to create some standards around how we do solution proposals, how we get sign off on those proposals, um, how we document those. That's a piece of that has got the current state and then what the future state. So you see these consistent things within our, our, um, our documents going forward. Um, and Sometimes a solution may re be require, a whole solution may require infrastructure for it. So we'll be pulling that stuff in as well. So we've, we've made great leaps forward in terms of creating um, documents and artifacts to help us communicate solution proposals and, 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 um, and help managing the project. So these are the areas that I and this is a, this kind of comes from Gartner. This is how Gartner looks at it. When I went to the Togo training, as crazy as that was and all over the place, when I went to the Gartner conference, it was great because they rationalized it. They, they boiled it down to something reasonable that I could talk to, that I could understand, that I could come back and, and help um, other people to understand as well. So I kind of use their model the most. Uh, these are the roles that Gartner defines for our architecture. So you have the enterprise architect that uh, you know, sees all the pieces, whether it's back to the other diagram, um, whether it's business process, whether it's, um, whether it's solutions, applications, information, data warehouses, infrastructure. You've got to kind of know or see a little bit of that. Can't be an expert in it all, but when you're going through the project list, it's you're checking it off, okay, yeah, I've got this covered and that's covered. And okay, I've got to go to this group and ask about, okay, we're going to do store, we need a storage platform, what will that be? But accounting for all those pieces. The business architect, as I mentioned, um, I, I've seen in, in other IT shops where there's just there's business analysts, uh, business systems analysts, we call them DSAs, you know, specific to an area, whether in the most familiar to me the SAP area or I've seen an FI person, an SD person, an HCM person, you know, I've seen all of those, those DSAs were there. And so when we were working from a, from a technical perspective, they were part of that core team. So kind of what business architects do is they look at the overall business process and, and how it works and what the workflow components are. Solutions, again, that's more at the application level. Um, the integration. Information. Pretty big definition for the other ones. Um, but to me, that's, that's the data model, that's the data warehouses. It's when I'm trying to do analytics on the number of students 
uh, that accept uh, offers to attend the university and what their average GPA is or what their, their average family income is. These are the people that help the people define their analytics or, ser or, or service their analytics. Okay? Uh, and technology, again, that's, that's the infrastructure there. And I, I place security in here quite, I don't know if that's okay with you, but I always think of security within that tool. It's part of the, it's part of the foundation. Uh, without it, you're going to be very good trouble. So when we started to implement it at, B, at BU, I, I found Gartner's definition for the best form. Again, be the most pragmatic and practical approach. Um, one of the, you know, our intent is to look at projects and, and, and rationalize them and reuse pieces that are already there that make sense to reuse or bring things together. Again, a more holistic approach. Um, always looking at the business process, um, looking at interoperability, being able to sustain something once once it's been delivered, that's always going to be key to it. Um, this all started in 2010. I can't remember when did Tracy come. 2009. 2009. <coughs> so then, then in 2010, um, we started. We created it. Janet, when Janet came aboard, the first thing she did within the application space was propose solutions architecture, um, and then. After I got here, uh, Tracy, I had dialogue with Tracy. She understood I had some background in, in operations as well and, and some of the technology, so she graciously let me do the enterprise architect, uh, which was great because I enjoyed all aspects of the process. I think if we walk in, we just wanted to. I, I just love it all. I do. Sorry, I'm maybe I'm going to be but uh, I am passionate about IT and I really enjoy seeing a whole solution come together. From all, from all aspects. Yeah, no, I know. I look around and I think we're all these. Right? Uh, we were given the authority to um, to define some principles and standards and guidelines. I think we've done that pretty well, and pretty thoroughly in the solutions area. I'm looking at starting to do. We've done some in the technology area. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing that, and, um, and again, it's about all. It's about sustaining. You know, if, if we can, if we can standardize on a particular server platform, or, or uh, you know, virtualization is a big one, so we should pretty much be virtualized. Um, when we're using, how we're using cloud, how we're, what store underlying storage platforms we're using here, and how we're managing, and how we're managing backups and things like. If we can standardize on it, just makes it much easier to sustain on the field. That's, uh, silos, less skill sets that you need, you know, you can get people more fully trained and <coughs> job share and just came out of a meeting where we were talking about doing the, the active directory thing and we're trying to job share across groups, right? If you have more and more, it's harder to do that. You have less, it's easier. So I'm looking forward to continuing to do the points in this thing. Um, I guess I had the bridge there in the buildings because that's what EA does, the price of bridge, all the different things. We've created an organization around this, so around that we have uh, a steering committee, which is our senior IT leadership. That's Tracy, Quinn, Michael Krugman, and Janet O'Brien. So they're invoked when we have any kind of issue that we're struggling with and we need a perspective on. Uh, we have I've been fulfilling this role, and, and under that we have the different groups. Not that everything's report, not everything's reporting into me now, but certain pieces are within solutions. It has been technology to a point, the security stuff, so reports from the point has been part of our architectural review board from the beginning, because he's here. Um, information, that's a lot's coming from Mark Farrier, because they're doing the data warehouses and things of that nature uh, in the security. So that's how, I, how it's kind of structured here. We have an, an architecture review board. Um, and again, the, from 
different things, applications, that's solutions, so that's Vlad, and that's a lot of that's in the JAN space. Um, but there's other application platforms here that aren't necessarily in our applications group. You know, we think of Blackboard, we think of some of the other tools. Um, <coughs> systems operations, systems engineering. Um, I, I already mentioned our data warehouse and then InfoSec part of the security. So this is how we, we have a team, there's a, there's a list of people and we meet. I think going forward we're gonna, again, a part of looking at our charter and making some adjustments to some of the, how we do, how we look at projects, when we need to be involved, when we need to have approval on things, we're gonna be looking at that. To date we've mostly been looking at our top services and, and looking at things like what the current state looks like and making sure we have diagrams of that, what the future state might look like, what projects are on the, uh, self improvement projects are on the road now. I try to look at performance metrics of certain uh, services. <coughs> this is a diagram, it's in our charter um, of our governance and, and how different things should come in. Uh, there's different <coughs> points where we assess something and it will go a certain path based on the cost of the, the, um, the, cost of the project. Uh, what I'm going to ask the, uh, the team to do is look at this a little more um, information into it. We're definitely handling, um, in the solution space, we're handling even enhancements now through ServiceNow. We have a way of viewing that and, and being, being involved so that we know when we're looking at things, we're able to say, um, why are we making an enhancement when in, in this particular project in its roadmap there is we're going to be delivering that. So we, we bumped in that, the IEM is one of them, and the IEM access management, and lots of things that we were trying to do in the application space, we're going, well, if we wait, if we get funding for IEM, then this is going to come with that, or things, things of that nature. So we, we've, we've evolved that, we just haven't gone back to the chart and we reflect that, so I, I want to do that this year. But just so you know that there's a process that we follow, we try to follow related to looking at parties. Um, the coordination of the different frameworks is something from the beginning that we started. At, at, the, at that time, we started the PMO, and we think about 2010, and the, uh, the SMO, the Service Management Operation, right? So, really wanted to bring together these frameworks so that as projects transition, um, as they go from a requirement into a solution and then into, into service that we have a smooth transition, that we're looking at things so that when we get here we're not going, wait a minute, back here there was a requirement for high availability. How, how did, why didn't we, why didn't we, when we designed it, why didn't we get that in? Right? So looking and having these frameworks communicate and work effectively together is very important. I mentioned the template that we have, that template for solutions has uh, was agreed to by by Dev and the PMO and Vlad and my and my solution architects. Like they they agreed, you know, these are the these are the standard things that we see when we put forth a proposal and um, and the template template reflects that. Sometimes something is something there's some optional things in there, it depends on what, what the solution is that we're trying to do. But so we from the beginning, so back to 2010 Right away, coming in, I was working with Bev on the PMO side, Peter Basquette on the, on the SMO side, mm -hmm. trying to coordinate that. Um, recently, in the last year, Eric Danenberg reports to me, which is good, so I at least have to change management stuff. Um, I work with Hillary a lot on things. So we've, we try to tie these things together. Mm -hmm. So down there in the right-hand corner, uh, PMO and enterprise architecture have a great conversation going on. Um, what happens to the technical applications people? I mean, does the PMO, does the PMO really know? Like, can they actually have a complete conversation with you at, at, at that stage of things? About, are you kind of missing somebody in there? No, uh, you know, so we work with systems engineering, right? <coughs> we have in the past. Um, it's going to be even more imperative now that I am responsible for systems engineering and systems operations, right? Yeah. I mean, we've already seen that. We've had some news just recently that 
I, I can see it starting to come together. It's mostly me right now on, on, with all groups, but at some point, I'm going to try to bring it a little more together. But in the past, no, I mean, we, we would look at, and these guys can talk to it, when we saw um, a request come in from here, we would, we, in the part of the solution we proposal, we would say whether we would hire the right? We would be looking at those things and talking to the groups and going, okay, if we, where, where would this fit? You know, if we're going to do it in a virtualized environment, then we want it replicated between the two sites. Is it part of, does it, is there a DR component? You know, we talk to Jay, who does systems operations and manages the DR plan, right? So, they work. Um, I think sometimes it's visible to the panel, maybe sometimes it isn't, I don't know. But it's definitely something that has to be done. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's not, you know, I'm concerned that you know, the PMO is probably the only reason we this analyst. Yeah. And so, you know, we keep talking about a configurable tool. It's Yeah. <laughs> you know, somebody who really, really knows that configurable tool should really be, I would, I would think, be part of that yeah. conversation pretty actively. And if it, if it goes on, you know, with your actual technical knowledgeable person that at the applications end of the box, I, I just concerns me that you would miss things that might it might not turn out the maximum efficient complete and correct solution. Right. You may not know the options, you may not know the pitfalls of you know of whatever this thing is. Right. So but recently we've been looking at on base and whether we're going to do it in the cloud, whether we're going to have to upgrade here. Bob's, Bob's, right? Who's been, uh, you guys, speaking to more people there? Have you guys? So Ralph's, I got a document from Ralph that he's put together. I can assume we provide some input. Ralph certainly does talk to me. Right, <laughs> yeah. And who's the PM on there? It's probably Nathan. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I'm saying that. Yeah, so you are provided input yeah. into that. And we're working in, in, in operations and providing costs on hosting and this and that. And that. So I, I mean, it doesn't say it's perfect, but yeah. certainly open to when we see a gap to jump on it, right? So, you know, I think it's challenging without having, a, you know, somebody put in a, in a I think, Sherry, correct me if I'm wrong, in, in VWorks, with, with, where you have, you know, you have FI and you have HCM, whenever you guys are doing something, you, you have one of those analysts or configurators working right alongside you as, as a developer that you're working with, right? Yeah. yeah. So I mean I've seen it in that environment it works really it's rigorous. And it's good. Right? Here it's it is definitely a challenge. Because I came back from the Tobif and I came back from Gardner saying, help. Because <laughs> the first thing is business. <laughs> help me. And, and I again I'm used to having those BSAs right there, right in line with the, the technical people, you know, I saw them. And so, and so I was like, okay, let's, and, 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 and I find in some situations, like Brad, when we were looking, we were looking at the graduate admission stuff, he came right from that. He's, it's awesome, bro. Yeah. He gives me, you know, I can start down a technical path and go, oh, you know, and then I hear him, and I'm like, oh, no, no, okay, I can't back off that, this doesn't make sense, it, you know, but it's, I think it's something we can continue to improve upon. Um, information and artifacts. So there's a SharePoint site here. You can find the charters. You can find uh, a repository, uh, which is just a collection of a bunch of different artifacts, whether it's current state, uh, something that uh, we, we have in service today. It could be, we've done a lot of these days with all the key stuff there. And, and that environment, we've got AG, we've got Exchange, we've got the main thing is student system stuff. We have a lot of information from who works on the SAP environment. Um, we get detailed as even on the mainframe, we break it down into different applications that are there. Uh, some stuff you're going to see evolving right now. Housing is coming out of the mainframe. It's going to be a standalone application. The FitRec application is as well. But you can see all these artifacts that we've been putting there over the last few years where. It helps when we get a project request on base. 
is one of them to the data warehouse stuff. And when we get a request for something, we start there. Right? We're looking at there. I also put the TOGA documentation that we have is TOGA 9 is the current version. Like 9.1 is out now. It's mm -hmm. there. It's good enough. You can see how uh, overwhelming it is. We've used pieces of it. We're currently doing uh, an activity within applications where we're taking the entire application portfolio that we have, everything, and, and creating a map of the integration dependencies. So a good example is in the student information system space, right? So that's a three words that make up on the mainframe about 15 plus little individual applications. So when we were looking at Workday, doing the Workday project, you know, there was a way, when Workday was a student information system, so what is that for, from a BU perspective? And so I, we had to go in and start to map things quickly because I wanted to say, okay, this is in scope for the work, if we were gonna go down the path of Workday, um, this is in scope, and this is, and this is a gap, and this is something we've gotta account for. So there was a goal put into all of the applications teams um, tips for working with enterprise architecture from solutions architecture to create this map of applications. So that will go on here the first of the year. We've made an initial pass at that. We're following this, a total template to do that. There's a template out there that's pretty easy to use and it's easy to do. And so going forward, I could look look at something and say, okay, this is, you know, I know what's, what's if we were to do it, again, the work they went to the example, if we were to do that as a hosted solution, this is what on our end, we no longer have to worry about anything, anymore. but these are the things that we make, and we have to create integration points for it. So we're using Toga to do that. Um, we have the architecture review board. We have monthly meetings. Um, again, I'm going to be looking to make improvements in this, and in particular related to the governance and how we look at things. We've tried to take the different budget within the budget cycle. We get we put in project requests, and the question's always been, when do we want to put this through an architecture review board process? Because we could go through different stages of the budget and then be denied, and we, if we looked at it and spent our time on it, then it wasn't worth it. I don't know, I've got to sort that out going forward. I want to, I want to involve, in, uh, involve this board more in looking at that and helping to find some strategy and understanding the strategy. Uh, We've used it lately to just look at continuous improvement for some of the top services. Security was our first one we looked at last year, and we've been rolling through that. We did more of the foundational services this year, directory, authentication, we did integration. Recently, we started doing applications, so we did Blackboard. Uh, this month is student systems. February is new works or SAP, right? So now we're starting to Get in, we're going to be in a cycle where monthly we're going to continue to look at it. I've also used this form in these presentations to drive the creation of the um, what's the configuration manager. So, so our CMD. I just used the four letters. <laughs> hey, we got our IO training done. So, um, so. We've been able to take these presentations and use those, and Eric has been building out, because one of the things that we want to be able to see is an impact, right? So we're going to take this service offline for today. We just came out of a meeting earlier today. We are talking about some networking changes that we've got to do in the data center, and what services they're going to impact. Well, it would be great if we could do that all within the, the CNDB. That's our future point that we will. We're just not there yet. So th this month, we'll be bringing in student systems and what all the pieces are. So that's the main frame and it's the means, these different components of that. And so that's what we've been using the review board for. And again, I'm hoping to extend it and improve it. Uh, again, the biggest thing is that we're looking at these, these transitional and target architecture states, you know, as is what we want to go, what we want it to be in the future. Yeah, we know, we know, example of Housing was a big one. So Housing is, is again, a series of components on the mainframe and how they integrated with all the other components. And so when, we, when uh, Ryan created a, a diagram of all of the dependencies, and it was 
pretty over. It really surprised some people, right? It was like, whoa. And it's not just a matter of implementing a piece of shrink wrap software, software configuring it, and then going. No, it's all that plus setting up all the integration and making sure that you know, we're looking at these solutions that we're implementing. And we use existing tools like uh, our single sign on solution, AAA web logging, whatever it may be going for, right? So, so we're constantly looking at this stuff. And then I mentioned this, you'll find also there the solution architecture template that we need. Quinn had um, created a template for the security stuff. We incorporated that within. So we're asking those questions. I hope to get better and more, do more of the security stuff up front, mm -hmm. as opposed to at the end of being and having the reactive yeah. work. I, I think we can get better at that. And it's always under construction. Um, we're always trying to make improvements. The charter isn't a, a static thing that just stays out here. We'd be making improvements to it as needed. Uh, and, and that's just part of the, the methodology and framework. Okay. Any questions about that? And that, you know, I can I can point you if you want to see some of the examples of some of the more detailed documents. Um, I can point you to all the examples. So Dan, we just worked on it for the graduate emissions. We were looking at, uh, again, instead of solving the one-off, request came in to do enhancements to gems, right? So we, looked, we stepped back and looked at it more holistically and I said, you know, what can, we, what can we do from a solution standpoint that services all of the graduate schools associated with the university? So we've gone through an evaluation where we've looked at a number of application providers in that space. They have different levels of services that they offer. Um, and you were all part of that, right? All the detail and you, you, you trudge through. Um, I don't know where it's going to go. I'm hoping that it's going to go somewhere. Uh, because if we could standardize on, on that and everything, and then they just align your business process. You know, we have to pick a solution that was configurable by business process because the schools do have different processes. You know, when you think of medical school, you've got a different series of tests that come before you can be accepted as law school is different and this and that. So we looked at solutions. Those were all part of our requirements as a, as a, a board that's evaluating what our next step forward is. But I can point you to documents that we've been part of that's created detail around that or, or being created for um, some of the enhancements we have to do just recently to kind of get reporting working. Because one of the things we're doing is academic data warehouse and it's all the undergraduate stuff comes in the fact that it comes in good, we can run microstrategy, they can do their analytics, like I was saying, you know, acceptance based on income, whatever. Um, the graduate schools, some are hit, hit or miss, so now we've extended that and we're taking exports in and we're loading that in, but I'm hoping that's just a temporary solution and we get to really solving the bigger problem where they standardize on a solution that just comes with it. So you, I could point you to all that kind of stuff here. Um, I think the artifacts we, we use and the stuff that we adopted from Tola and Gartner is really impactful. Um, I don't know if anybody's worked with you or now, but it's a standard for documenting uh, programs or something of that nature. You know, I, I've done some of that. I that you know, it's at Phillips and we're doing a master data management thing. Okay. But sometimes just simple diagrams kind of that common sense may work just as effective as detail. Unless I'm pro if I gotta generate programming instructions from it, then maybe UML's good, but you're not gonna find any, I don't think we've got any UML stuff anywhere. Anyway. So so I think you can look at the stuff that we have in the sense Okay, so uh, how did I get here? I'm always under construction, just like just like the methodology. I really am. Um, my favorite tool growing up as a kid was Legos. Um, and that's what this is. This is building things, putting them together. Um, I had a, when I was in sixth grade, we did this career assessment test that I think back is kind of funny. And they said to be an architect. So at the time, I'm thinking, I want to build buildings. I don't like working with wood. And, you know, my father dragged me when I had to, we had to build a garage on, added onto our house that was painful. So it was something I didn't want to do. So 
And it's years later, I find myself as an author. Oh, true. <laughs> different, different platforms. Um, but I always loved Legos. And I love IT. And, and I, I've been fortunate enough in my career to work from the ground up. I came out of college and I was a programmer. I, was, I came out of business college and so it was always, you know, I've never been a scientific programmer. It's always been related to business applications and integration of them and, and things of that nature. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not embarrassed to say I was a COBOL programmer at the time. That was the state. We were talking about Fortran training making a comeback. That was the first language I, I learned. But uh, all those things, you know, prepared me for a logical way of thinking and a way of breaking things down. And there I was at Digital Equipment Corporation when it was a company. I was never going to get this done. It never did exist. I guess that, that's an example of a, a marketing uh, flaw. They didn't market themselves very well. But I was there, we were, we were trying to integrate applications. So here's, um, here's an order of management application, and then here's a manufacturing application. And we we're trying to tell the customer when stuff is going to arrive on their dock. This is how we got to SAP, how I got to SAP for the first time. Right? So we, we created all this integration, and our flaw was, well, they go and they cancel the order, and we never put the inventory back. Right? And so we got into the, all this thing where we were going to do single units, of, we are going to do uh, commits, uh, units of work, and all this other stuff. And then, oh, and this is in the early 90s, along comes SAP, out of the box, to do available to promise, to do the receivables at the same time that it took the order, to do everything. I mean, it was like, it was a, it was a, a miracle. Right? The first ERP I ever saw, I'm like, oh my god, you gotta change careers. I'm gonna be an integrator. I'm not gonna write this stuff from scratch. And that's where it, I, it, it really got fun for me, was, was doing that. And then I got a call about uh, when I was on vacation working at this company, Abbott, and I was mainly focused on the SAP environment. I got a call saying, hey, congratulations, you get data center and, and operations as well. And what it come to find out, it was a decision between either me getting laid off or the data center manager getting laid off. And it's fortunate that the director of, um, of the application said, you're not going to find anybody that knows SAP, is, particularly in this environment as well as Larry does, because I've been there from the beginning. So I was fortunate. He got let go, and I, I got handed the, uh, the operations. And that was great, because now I had, could have arguments with myself. I need a server. OK. I'll get it. <laughs> you know, um, I want to. I need to upgrade this. Okay. Right? I mean, it, was, it took a lot of, a lot of headaches, a lot of negotiations out that uh, were pretty easy. So all that experience to, has brought me to this point, and that's why when I when I think of that architect, that enterprise architect role, I mean, it fits my personality. Whether it fits yours or not, I, I don't know. Um, I like to look at all the, the things holistically and all the pieces together. So that's how I got here. All, all this experience just happened through my career. I mean, the, the big thing was the SAP thing. That, that was a big change for me at that time, because I was going to be this programmer. And, and then, you know, to see it all done, I'm like, wow, that takes the thunder out of it. But it was weird. At, 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 at Digital at the time, we had 450 applications doing all this stuff. We're going to implement SAP and make it the 450 first. I'm like, you got to see why. Like, just install it and get all the business units on it, and it does everything. And it does. Uh, and then when I went to Abbott, it was a small enough environment where that's what they did. And they started to retire all their standalone applications. My son's in that, it's funny you told me about the core program. My son's at SMG, and he just finished core. And uh, he didn't get the A that he wanted in uh, the IT class there. And he goes to me and he goes, ERPs, you know ERPs, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Trevor, you've been putting the food on the table since you were born. Goes, oh, I should have come. I'm like, I told you in the semester, if you have any IT questions, come talk to me. I'll be happy. And that's when he learned a good, uh, good lesson about utilizing available resources. Yes. <laughs> yes. So anyway, th this is just, that's, that's how I got here. Anybody can get here to however, whatever their experience is. I think, um, you know, one of the other logos that's on here is this. Um, I started coming to BU, 
probably was five years out of my undergraduate, and I came, started coming here and taking classes. Um, so in the late 90s, uh, early 90s, and like database management was one of them, uh, networks, data com, uh, artificial intelligence, that was one programming the list, and some of these other classes that really, at the time in my career, really helped me. I didn't know databases. We were starting to play with that under SAP, and SQL was coming out. And so I, I was attending these classes at the U and it was a really great experience, and then going back to work and using them. So I still think I speak SQL better than English. I really do. It's either SQL or COBOL. But, um, so that's, I, anybody can get here, however you want to get exposed to this stuff. I think it's just how you, how you look at things and how you break them down. Um, I would say I'm more I'm, I'm stronger on the application side, probably. But I try to understand the infrastructure and how the pieces are related. So, because that kind of came afterwards. You could come from it the reverse way. You could be stronger on infrastructure. You could be really strong on security stuff, or you know the client service stuff, or the other stuff, and just kind of put all the pieces together and still let those. Any questions? Okay. Yep. So you touched on it a little bit towards the end there, but um, when we're looking at enterprise architecture, how do you take into account semi-autonomous partners? Um, or uh, hybrids like the UNC, which are half partner, half not. How do, how do you work that in enterprise architecture? Um, relationship management. <laughs> so, I wrote the charter, and I have to spend a lot of time with Tracy, because she understands pirate and, and how it works. I, I had no, until 2010, I had no idea. I thought everything worked like a company. <laughs> and, and, and today, I have to keep myself constantly because my first tendency is to look at it from a business perspective and, you know, and how efficient you have to do things in business. Um, so she, we had to spend a lot of time to fix the, the chart that came, the template that came from, from Gartner, right? And I started with it and worded so that it wasn't, it didn't offend anybody. So what I, I try is to relationships part. I try to go over, you know, I try to go over to medical campus, and I have, and I, I think I have a great relationship with, with Chris or, you know, people like John Myers and other people would, and it's been Tracy, thankfully, because she understands how the organizations work, who's led me to places at times. You know, I don't think she'd admit that, you know, yeah, I sent you there with a purpose, but I think she did, you know. It, it, and I started to try to build relationships. I tried with, you know, I tried to work with the uh, the other IT uh, departments within the, the colleges, right? And, and using them, we've done that with some of our projects, uh, particularly the infrastructure ones, whether it was the archive one or um, IEM, definitely, you know. So it's a lot more relationship than it management than it is, you know, like following the, the exact. I, I said I, I was at um, EduPost for the first time, and I went to this session on architecture, and it was a lot of complaining. And, and I raised my hand and I said, so how do you deal with this? How do you deal with doing enterprise architecture when you don't really have an enterprise? I mean, it's just, it, it's these different pockets. And nobody had an answer, but that, so that's where I came back with the conclusion, I just have to be a relationship I want to have an open dialogue with people and, and see requirements and work with it. But that's about all from up with. You know, there's nothing in the COVID training and the partner that addresses that. Anything else? Any compliment. Um, I've had the opportunity to interact with quite a few of the architects. Um, it, it's invaluable. They're extremely knowledgeable. When we collaborate, we definitely come up with better, more complete solutions than we would otherwise. So, yeah. thank you, thank you all. Thank, thank you very much. So, you know, yeah. you know, one of the things too, and you saw the announcement that came out of Tracy about the org changes last month, right? So the group that we're in now is called Enterprise Architecture and Systems. So I think that's the next step of really bringing it together. So I'm hoping to see even more progression. You know, like anything, it, it, it's got to be a production. It's got to be under construction all the time. It can't be 
you know, you can't go in and just slam this in, particularly in, in, in a higher ed environment. It's going to work. And it's failed at other places. I, I think MIT, they, they kind of they had a whole discipline around it, and I think they kind of folded it back into. So the, the fact is, I, you know, when we started out with this, we didn't want to become a bunch of prima donnas and dinosaurs, right? We want to, that's why we try to, it's, it's not only just working on the project design, but the, helping with the delivery and the sustainability of it. Right? You want to continue to show value and, and measure something. Thank you. I, I just think that I like it. Yeah. No, I like it too. I think it's a good way of holistically working at something. Solving, hopefully, problems at a, at a higher level that have a bigger impact. All right. Thank you. Larry, thank you very much. Appreciate it.